If your life is affected by multiple sclerosis or any other neurological condition, then this channel is for you. So please consider subscribing to be kept up to date with future videos. My name's Liam, and in 2018, I was diagnosed with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. If you think that you might have MS, then hopefully this video will explain some of the process, some of the tests and things like that, that you'll go through in order to get a multiple sclerosis diagnosis. So I'm gonna be running through all the different types of tests that are typically used to get an MS diagnosis. And at the end of the video as well, I'm gonna give you um, a suggestion of a test that you can do at home to see whether or not you may or may not have MS. If you already have a diagnosis, it would be interesting to see what tests you had to go through because not everyone goes through them all and how long did that take because it can really vary. So do let me know in the comments how long your diagnosis took and what tests they did in order to find out what you had. Now the clue is in it there in that there are a number of tests and not everyone goes through the same tests in the same order. You know, it can be quite convoluted at times. And actually what a lot of doctors, neurologists and other specialists tend to do is they try to test for everything else before MS. So they want to try and see if any of the symptoms that you have or you're currently experiencing could actually be something else. They'll try and rule out numerous different other diseases or conditions that may have similar symptoms um, and try and get those off the list before arriving at a diagnosis of MS. Diagnosing MS sometimes can be quite quick, but in most cases, it can take quite a long period of time. I think if you're undergoing uh, tests at the moment, you're sort of on the start of that journey, then you should be expecting to wait anywhere between six months to one, maybe two years or more. It really can depend on what symptoms you have, um, whereabouts you're based in the country sometimes, different um, you know, different governing bodies or different um, hospitals or whatever might test differently. They might test in a different order. So, you know, there's no defined sort of time frame. So unfortunately it can take a bit of time. I was quite lucky. Um, I think it was about six months for me, um, which which is pretty good in the grand scheme of things. Um, I don't know whether it was not whether or not it was because I was on the phone to my um, neurology department every day trying to get a uh, an MRI um, cancellation, um, or and they just got sick of me and, and put me through. I don't know, but yeah, uh, and and I think because my MS was quite it was progressing sort of quite quickly at the start. There were new symptoms popping up. So I think it was perhaps a bit easier to diagnose. And this is worth mentioning. If you only have one symptom, uh, potentially even one lesion on your brain, they won't give an MS diagnosis typically. They do tend to wait for one or two lesions or, or sorry, maybe two or three lesions uh, or two or three symptoms so that they can help them define that actually it is MS and not something else like maybe lupus or fibromyalgia or whatever it might be. I guess the clue is in the name multiple sclerosis. So the first tests that you should be expected to go through typically will be blood tests. Now there's no way to diagnose MS through blood tests but what they do first of all is do blood tests to see if there's anything in your blood, any indication or evidence to suggest that it might be something different. And again, they'll be able to rule out a number of diagnoses based on the results of your blood tests so that they can try and narrow it down to, to uh, you know, to find out exactly what is wrong with you. Along with blood tests, typically around the same time, you'll go through something called evoked potential tests. Now, these tend to be more sort of observations by a neurologist or a doctor that would indicate whether or not it, it is or isn't MS. Um, these will be things like seeing how your eyes react to light or different movements. Um, because there may be traits or indications that there's um, you know, something not quite right there. How your eyes behave can give an indication towards MS um, due to the fact that obviously it affects the whole nervous system. People tend to get things like blurred vision, but there can be other indications that doctors can pick up on to see whether or not this is a trait of MS. We'll also include things like um, reflex tests, balance tests to see how you are on your feet, how your mobility is, um, whether your body reacts to certain things in the way that it should, uh, and really try to engage you know, your body and your brain to see how they're coping together um, and see if there's any signs there that there's something wrong that may indicate um, MS or, or something different. Once you've got your test results back, chances are you'll be moving on to the MRI. So MRI machines, huge big pieces of kit, very loud, very noisy, confined spaces, not great for, for everyone, but um, something that is necessary in this instance to be able to get a diagnosis. A uh, clever piece of kit will take lots of pictures of your brain, your neck and your spine to try and see if there's evidence of lesions or attacks where your body your immune system has attacked your, attacked your central nervous system and you know th there'll be sort of visible um, lesions or, or little watermarks. These lesions can give an indication of 
how long you've had MS or whether it's, it's a really new thing or you've had symptoms or, or attacks that you've perhaps not even noticed yet um, and also show whether or not the lesions that you have are still active um, or whether they've kind of gone into that remittance phase. Another test for MS, which I haven't had and I know some people that have and I'm not sure why I didn't get that test and some people did, whether some people have that instead of an MRI or as well, but it's the lumbar puncture. Now that is where fluid is drawn from the base of your spine and much like the blood tests, I guess, the fluid from your spine should give evidence of MS, whether there's been those attacks or whether it's certain hormones they're looking for, I'm not quite sure, but the results from the, um, from the lumbar puncture should show whether or not MS is present. It's quite a painful procedure, I'm led to believe. Um, I'm quite relieved it wasn't something that I had to experience. If you had to have a lumbar puncture, how was it? Let me know in the comments. Um, you know, if it was quite painful, I, I do feel for you there. But as we all know, uh, if those of us that have MS, um, you know, an aversion to needles uh, isn't great if you've got, if you have one, because um, yeah, you're going to be spending a lot of time in doctor's offices and hospitals, getting blood tests and, and various other bits and stuff. So it's something you're going to unfortunately have to get used to. So if you're waiting to go through that testing phase and you're, you know, you, you've got a doctor's appointment or you're waiting for your MRI, but you're quite convinced that you might have MS, then there's a really good test that you can do at home, which gives a really good indication um, of, of whether or not you have MS. I don't know that it works for everybody, um, but it certainly worked for me and was a real clear indication that, that um, something wasn't right. It's actually a test that was used predating MRI scans when technology wasn't quite as advanced as it was. This was a test that doctors would do to see if, um, if you had MS. And this is a hot bath. So heat and stress are not great for many people, but yeah, uh, stress especially. Um, but for people with MS, it can really heighten symptoms of fatigue, um, optic neuritis, where your eye and your vision goes blurry or you get pains, um, tingling can worsen, and just generally you just feel worse. Um, which is why when there's been heat waves here recently, you know, a lot of patients with MS have, have really suffered. Um, so before I was diagnosed, I, I, I would occasionally have a bath. That's not a stretch on my on my hygiene. I, I prefer to shower, um, but I would have the odd bath and I would notice when I got out of, the, well, when I was in the bath, vision would go blurry. I would feel really run down and tired quite quickly. And I would really notice it when I then got out of the bath because I was really dizzy. I couldn't see properly and just generally wasn't pleasant. So I stopped having baths and, and stayed um, stayed to my uh, faithful shower. Um, and uh, yeah, but it, that I'd read up as well was uh, an indication that, or, or a previous test of, of MS. Fortunately, technology has advanced, medicine has advanced, and we now have some more accurate tests available to us, but it's one that you can try at home um, and obviously feed that back to your doctor if, um, if it did or didn't have uh, an adverse effects on your body. All these tests are great for trying to find MS, uh, but not just trying to find it present, but also trying to establish what type of MS you have. Um, there are different types of MS. Uh, I think I go into a bit more detail in the video up here. So if you're newly diagnosed or you are sort of pre-diagnosed, uh, check that video out as well and see if it helps you to understand perhaps what type of MS you might have if you have got MS. Uh, and also just to understand that there are two different types and, and subtypes galore. So yeah, do check that one out. So like I said at the start of the video, if you have MS, MS. It'd be great to hear your story. How were you diagnosed? How long did it take? What tests did they do? And if you are sort of pre-diagnosed, if you sort of think it might be MS, but you're getting tests or you've spoken to your doctor, where are you up to in that kind of process? And uh, you know, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. Either I can answer them uh, or I'll try my best, certainly, or anyone else watching the video uh, may be able to provide some insight to you as well. Thanks again for checking out the video. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, it'd be great to have you on board and ring that bell to let you know when I next upload a video. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button and I will see you in the next one.